Consider the equation x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 1. It almost looks like a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1, but you have this extra term in the middle. If, if we start plotting some points, so get an idea of, of what's on here. You could have, for example, x is 0 and y is 1, or y is 0 and x is 1, or one of them could be minus 1 and the other one could be 0. But, so, so, so you still have these four points, but we get some other points as well. For example, if x is positive 1 and y is negative 1, then you get 1 minus 1 plus 1, and that, that satisfies it as well. So you could have x being positive 1 and y being negative 1, or you could have your x being negative 1 and your y being positive 1. And both of those satisfy this as well. Well, it turns out that the solution set to this equation is just an ellipse. So an elongated circle, elongated on, on one axis, but, but rotated. Okay, so it looks something kind of like this. And, and given an ellipse, you, you might wonder some things about it. For example, down here we said we have the point 1 minus 1. And so you might ask, well, what is the slope of the tangent line there? It, it looks like it has slope 1, but, but could we verify that, right? So, so how would we go about finding information about slope of tangent lines? Well, we need to find some function for y. That is, our goal should be to find some y equals some function so that then we can find the derivative of y. y is some function of x. But it's really hard to solve this for y. I mean, it's pretty much impossible, right? Like, like how am I going to solve this for y? I have two different pieces that both have y in it. I can't factor out a single y. I still have a y here. And so, so I can't get this down to y as some function of x. So what is that trick? Well, implicit differentiation says just pretend y is some function of x. Just treat y as some function of x and go ahead and find the derivative. You know, we, we know that y isn't actually a function of x because this passes the vertical line test. But locally, any section of this could be modeled where within that section y is acting as a function of x. And so, so this is why the method works. And let's see how it plays out. When we find the derivative, we get the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of x times y, this is a product, so we need to use our product rule. So we have x times the derivative of y. Since we're treating y as just some function of x, we'll call the derivative of y y prime, whatever the derivative of that function is. Plus, now we're going to take the derivative of the first, it's going to be 1, and we're going to hold the second y. Then plus the derivative of y squared. Since we're treating y as some function, it's just like some function squared. So the 2 comes down, the function stays the same, and you multiply it by the derivative of that function, the derivative of y, which is y prime. And that should be equal to the derivative of 1, which is 0. So we took the derivative of both sides of the equation. Now you might be a little bit concerned because here we had a 2y y prime, but, but here there was no 2x x prime. So you're like, that's a little bit weird. Why are we treating y different than x? And, and so just think for this, well, if you did try to write, you know, uh, some x prime, what do you mean by that? You'd be saying, take the derivative of x with respect to x. But that's just one, so there's no need to write it. By way of contrast, when I say y prime, what I'm really saying is the derivative of y with respect to x. And since I'm thinking about y as being some function, this is, this is just the derivative of that unknown function. So this actually is something. y prime actually denotes something, whereas x prime is just one, so we don't need to keep track of, keep track of x primes. Okay, let's keep going. Now we have taken the derivative of both sides we have a whole bunch of y primes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for y prime. We're going to solve for y prime. And our approach is going to be, we're first going to put all the y prime pieces on one side. So I'm going to leave these two pieces on the one side. So I'll have x y prime plus 2y y prime. And, and then I'll take these other two pieces and put them on the other side negative 2x minus y. 
What do we end up with? We end up with y prime, well, let's see, both these have a y prime, so I can factor that out. Give me y prime x plus 2y is equal to minus 2x minus y. Hence, I get y prime is equal to dividing over minus 2x minus y all over x plus 2y. I have an expression for my derivative. This is going to be describing the slope at any point. So for example, if I want to know what the slope is at the point 1 minus 1, I can just go ahead and I can calculate what is my y prime at 1 minus 1. And so I'll plug in here. Wherever I see an x, I plug in 1. Negative 2 times 1. Minus, wherever I see a y, I put in minus 1. Minus 1. All over na uh, oh, x, so that's, that's positive 1, so all over positive 1, plus 2 times y, which is minus 1. What do I get? Minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1, on top of 1 minus 2, which is minus 1, slope of 1, just like, just like we expected. There's another question we might ask. Now that we know how to find the slope of the tangent line at any given point, we might ask, where does this graph have, say, horizontal tangent lines? Where, where are the tangent lines to this horizontal? So for example, right up here on top, there seems to be a point where this tangent line is, is nice and flat. So, so if I want to find horizontal tangent lines, horizontal tangent lines, I'm looking for places where the tangent line lies flat. That is where my derivative should be equal to zero, because zero would be horizontal. So to find where my horizontal tangent is, I'll just look at this equation for my derivative, and I say, I want that to be zero. Well, I know a fraction is zero exactly when the top of that fraction is zero. So this is the same as saying minus 2x minus y is zero which means that y is just equal to minus 2x. Well, that can't be it. I mean, there's all kinds of points where y is minus 2x. You know, if x is like 2 and y is minus 2, that would satisfy that. But this is a point that's not even on, not even on the curve. So now to guarantee you get points on the curve, we should also take into account the equation here. We want y to be equal to minus 2x, but we also want the equation to be satisfied. So to do this, we're going to plug y equals minus 2x into the equation. Doing so gives me x squared plus x times y, so x times minus 2x, plus y squared minus 2x squared equals 1. That is x squared minus 2x squared plus 4x squared equals 1. Let's simplify a little bit. 4 minus 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so 3x squared is 1. Dividing by the 3, we get 1 third, so x squared is a third, so x is the square root of a third. Actually, not just the square root of a third, the plus or minus square root of one third. You have x could be one third, or your x could be negative one-third. What are my y values? Well, y is just negative two times whatever your x is. So if x is the square root of one-third, your y is negative two times the square root of one-third. And if x is negative square root of one-third, then times by negative two, you get for your y two times the square root. So, so, so this is two times. Let's write that nice and big. This is two times the square root of one third. If we go back to our graph, notice this point right here corresponds exactly to when x is the minus square root of one third and y is two times the square root of one third. How about this other point? Well, that would correspond right over here, where x is positive square root of one-third, and your y is negative two times the square root of one-third, 
giving you second point where the tangent is horizontal. You, you can try similar problems yourself. For example, if you want to know where the tangent line is, is vertical, where you have vertical tangent lines, you would say, okay, well, vertical, a vertical tangent line. What would that mean? Well, here I want my slope to be infinity. So I want my y prime to, to like be infinity, which is, really means it's undefined, right? I want it to be some undefined value, but that's going off to infinity. So, so what, would that, what would make that undefined? For y prime being a fraction, that would happen exactly when your x plus 2y is 0. And then you solve it in exactly the same way we did before. We would get some, some set like your x is equal to negative 2y. You would plug that back into this original equation. And you would find points, a point right here where its tangent line is vertical, and a point right over here where its tangent line is vertical.